WCLU news coverage of the 2020 general election is brought to you in part by Glasgow Prescription Center. The Glasgow Prescription Center is proud to be your whole life pharmacy because our goal is to provide the best pharmaceutical and home medical care to every patient that comes in our door. Log online to GlasgowRx.com or call 270-651-8889 to find out how Glasgow Prescription Center can serve you. Welcome today to our program, Marlon. Of course, we're glad to have you here to talk a little bit about your candidacy for the Glasgow City Council. Well, this coming December or 1st of January will be will have been my 12th year on the city council. Excellent. So, of course, uh, several years now of being on the council. And, of course, this November you're looking to get reelected. And uh, so first, you know, to just kind of create a clean slate, tell people about yourself. You know, uh, obviously being on the council for several years, I'm sure people are familiar with you, but perhaps someone who's moved to the community recently and is looking to kind of gauge, uh, you know, council members, talk about yourself a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm a born and bred Barron County in Glasgow. Um, start, I retired from Eaton, well, Eaton and Dana. Had almost 24 years there. And I'm, now I uh, paint on the side for, for a part-time job. Just keep me busy, keep me out of trouble. And of course, I was serving on the Council, I'm on the uh, Infrastructure Committee, I'm on the uh, Finance Committee, and, <laughs> well, gone blank. There's three committees I'm on, anyway. I can't remember the other one right offhand. The Plant Board. Finance, a Safety Committee. I, I knew that, I just couldn't think. Sure, <clears throat> sure. So you're kind of involved in all of these these things here. So, uh, of course, let's just, uh, you know, I know you've been on the board, or rather the uh, council for several uh, years. Oh, I'm also on the electric plant board as a council representative. Right. So, of course, having served on the council for, you said now, uh, 12 years. Be 12 years in December. Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, (coughs) just briefly about the 12 years, but let's really focus on the last two years of this term, just because I think those last two years are what, you know, are building on the next several years. What do you what do you think have been some uh, you know of course talking about those things that you know you've been involved in with the council but uh, what about some larger things I mean I know that you know of course we'll talk about some of the unfortunate things that have happened uh, but I'm talking you know things that you feel proud to have been involved with uh, as a council member well we've updated the parks uh, quite a bit over the years uh, since um, Mayor Armstrong come in, we've even updated more. Uh, of course, that's what people was wanting. And, of course, we're serving the people, so we try to do what the people want. Sure, sure. So, so of course, uh, I know this absolutely pertains to you. Uh, the past council interviews that I've done, um, of course, the public is always gearing toward the electric plant board. You know, they want to gauge what's the candidate's view on this or that. I think that it's shifted at this point. You know, say five years ago, it was really boiled down to, do you support yay or nay? But now it's a little bit more involved, I think. Um, So you actually being on that board, it's definitely of pertinence to this interview. So what do you think has been, uh, I know there's been challenges for sure um, over the last little bit, especially. Um, Are you satisfied with the way the board is working right now or or do you think that something... Needs now, which board are you talking about? I'm talking about the, the electric plant board. Oh, okay. Yes. So what I'm asking is, are you satisfied with the way the board is working, or do you think that there needs to be something else different? <laughs> We're trying uh, to make some changes, put it like that. Can you elaborate? Well, of course, as you know, it's been in court... Uh, suit's been brought against the electric plant board for a board member and then uh, we uh, once he was uh, ruled he was, was a board member we tried to have special call meetings and we got shot down there so we're still working on it but uh, hopefully we can get it straightened out Sure. So I'm just looking out. I'm not trying to cause any trouble. 
I'm just trying to look out for the citizens of Glasgow. That's my main objective. So, of course, I want to talk a little bit about, I know, tying in some things, some things that have come out recently um, about, you know, let's take Maureen, for instance. I know there's been comments from Maureen Carpenter about um, discussing the city's relationship with TVA has been a huge component. Um, obviously, um, the the way that the board currently stands, it, it appears to the community that that relationship is wanting to be dissolved. Is that a true statement? Want to be dissolved? Are, are you, I'm saying, do you think that the electric plant board, the majority of the board members, including yourself, um, are looking to dissolve Glasgow's relationship with TVA? We, what the, the majority right now wants is to get a consultant, independent consultant to come in and give us all the options that's available. If TVA is the best option we got, so be it. That, that would be it. Okay. So when we talk about, you know, I know you said the consultant is a huge part for you. Um, just curious, the other things that often appear, like the termination of the superintendent, what do you think those motives are rooted in? My personal opinion He's been there long enough. Okay. What? What do you? As far as, as they say, old saying goes, he's been there long enough. He needs some new blood, maybe. Okay. What would you hope new blood might bring? Well, uh, I can't go into details on this really right now because it's not. This can't be discussed, but uh, like I said, if, if the consultant comes in and we need these things, whatever, whatever is the best for the citizens, well, that's what we're going to do. Sure. I, I just think that there needs to be more elaboration, though. I know you said you can't. I'm not sure what that means, but I think as a citizen looking forward, you know, we are constantly, you know, we've been involved with some court, um, of course, and, and that's, you know, everyone's been entitled to that, um, to get those decisions clarified. But one thing is leading to the next, and I know this whole idea, of the consultant's been one part of this picture, but the other half of the picture has been the worry about terminating the superintendent and the, the litigation that could follow that. Do you think that terminating the superintendent is worth for the citizens of Glasgow would be worth it? Well, when you talk to the citizens I've talked to, and I, they call me, I don't call them, uh, They, yeah, yes, that's what they want. What I'm really getting at is, do you think that the stability of the actual board is directly correlated with the ability to recruit industry we or can, the ability we to? Can, we can operate, we can get along. That's not Move. what I'm asking, though. But well, I'm just telling you, I don't know what to tell you. No, no, no. I'm asking, do you think that if the board is in a state of turmoil, like it has been for several months, and we could say that on both sides, you know, side A argues this, side B argues that, and nothing happens. It'd be the same difference if the city council couldn't get anything They're done. They're still operating right now. Yes, they, yes. But what I'm saying is it's not a six to six, you know, vote on things. So moving forward, do you think it's in our best interest to display turmoil? No, I don't like to have turmoil either, but you need to uh, get things worked out and, and go forward. Okay. I just wanted to clarify some of those topics. Again, uh, for people to understand um, each council candidate's position on moving forward. So just to clarify with your position, of course, if you are on that board again, and, and we could pretend like uh, that you possibly might not be, but likely, you know, because we, you know, this news organization has spoken with the mayor before, and he's voiced his opinion uh, about specifically Mr. Ray, um, not the utility itself, but specifically Mr. Ray, you know, the personal opinion about Mr. Ray, and the mayor is in agreement with that. He thinks that someone else should be in that position. So from this point of view, I think it would make sense that 
the appointing person would appoint those that are like-minded with him. Is that true, you think? Probably. Sure, sure. And, and I just kind of want to wrap up. Anything that I failed to maybe ask that you would like to share with anyone listening? No, you've done a pretty good job. Good deal. All right. <laughs> well, of course, we wish you the best of luck this November. Uh, Thank you. We appreciate you coming in today, okay? I appreciate, appreciate the people's vote. All right. Good deal. Thank you, Mark. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Brennan Crane, News Director for WCLU Radio. Thank you for watching this portion of our 2020 election coverage. Visit us at WCLURadio.com and online at Facebook and Twitter for the latest and breaking news updates.